All right, so we're finally going to formally introduce the idea of a triple integral. Um, well, maybe formally is a stretch. We're actually not even going to go quite as far as a, as a detailed definition. Um, once you've seen the definition for, for single integrals and, and, and for double integrals, it's kind of clear how you extend this to, to three variables or you know, even more if you were so inclined. So the basic requirements are going to be that you start with some region E in R3, which should be closed, should be bounded. Um, if we wanted to get into a bit more detail in terms of, you know, guaranteeing that our integrals exist um, and those sorts of things, we might have to be a little bit choosier about um, how we define this region. Uh, in particular, uh, the boundary of the region has to be sufficiently nice. Um, generally, um, it's good enough to know that your boundary is sort of piecewise smooth is generally the condition, right? So, so you, the boundary is made up of a bunch of intersecting surfaces that are all smooth, and you use those to define the boundary. That's generally good enough, okay? Um, so you've got this region. You've got a function f defined on E, real valued function. It needs to be continuous. Well, I mean, it doesn't need to be, but if we want to guarantee that the integral exists, then certainly we, we probably can get away with assuming that f is continuous. Um, we know that the integral will exist in that case. So we want to define something like this. So something like a triple integral, f of x, y, z, over the region E. And just like, you know, for double integrals, we, we integrate with respect to area. For a triple integral, we integrate with respect to volume. And if we really wanted to kind of get into the details, and I'm skipping some of them, we might say something like, well, this is going to be defined as a limit. And it's going to be defined as a limit where, okay, well, i got to tell you what these vijk are, delta vijk. The limit as the size of those goes to zero, right? Or kind of the, the max. So, so the double bar is here meaning the kind of the biggest of all the delta v's. And, well, then we're going to have a sum. Let's say i going from 1 to l j going from 1 to m, and k going from 1 to n, and then we have something that looks like f of x i j k, y i j k, z i j k, and then a delta v i j k, right? Some kind of mess like this, right? Kind of analogous to what you have for a double integral, where you can probably guess what some of these ingredients are. Well, one, this is for the case where E is, is you know, kind of like a box. So a rectangular box. Something like that. All right? Um, so maybe x goes from a to b, y goes from c to d, z goes from, I don't know, s to t, something like that. And you partition in the x direction and the y direction and the z direction, so you get a delta xi, you get a delta yj, you get a delta zk. Your delta vijk is going to be, you know, so the si sort of size of this piece, right? So basically what you're doing is you're taking the big box and you're dividing it up into a bunch of little tiny rectangular boxes and the volume of each of those little rectangular boxes looks something something like that, right? And so as usual the requiring that the size of the boxes goes to zero is equivalent to to saying well that means that you know uh, the number of partition points with respect to x, y, and z so l, m, n those are all going to infinity. Um, you, you can go through this whole process. You can make it work. We're not going to go down that road. Um, 
you can keep this in your back pocket if you want to understand why you know triple integrals have certain properties which are as you might guess the same as the properties that you have for double integrals or for single integrals um, i'm never going to ask you to do anything from first principles with a triple integral we want to we want to calculate these things using using techniques of integration so then we say well how do you write this um, as an iterated integral. Well, so now we're going to move on and, you know, I mean, if, if our region E, if our region E is sort of a box like this, so if it's, say, X goes from A to B, y goes from c to d z goes from i don't know somehow e and e and f are not good letters for numbers let's say s to t um, then we're going to have something that looks like well this triple integral f of x y z right we could write this as well we could do we can do whatever order we want right um, so let's leave this for a second. So let's say, well, let's say we choose to do x, then y, then z. I hope that fits. That's just barely fitting. Yeah, it made it onto the screen. OK. Um, well, if we're doing x first, x goes from a to b, then y, y goes from c to d, z, well, z goes from s to t. All right. And Fubini's theorem applies here, just as it does for, for double integrals. Um, so you're allowed to change the order of integration, right? So you can, you can switch x and y, you could switch x and z, you could switch y and z. Um, in fact, there are six possible orders here, right? You can do x, y, z, you can do x, z, y, you can do y, x, z, you can do y, z, x, you can do z, x, y, you can do z, y, x. Right? There are six different orders, and all you got to do is make sure that the appropriate limits match up with the variables, right? As long as that goes, you can do this in whatever order you want. Fine, right? So let's just write that down. There are five other orders possible. Um, for, a, for a more general region, you're going to have to pay attention to how the region is described, right? Generally, the, the type of region that you're dealing with uh, much like with double integrals, the region is going to sort of force your hand in terms of choosing the order of integration, right? You're probably going to choose the order um, that gives you the simplest description of your region in terms of inequalities. Um, and, well, maybe the function also plays a role, right? Um, so let's do this maybe in uh, red. Put these down. So if, um, if your region E is given by... So let's say it's given by something like, uh, well, z is bounded by a couple functions of x and y. And then y, in turn, is given by functions of x. And then x is bounded by some constants, let's say, a and b. Well, if you have this set up here, then you can write down an integral that looks something like this. So we're going to have x from a to b, y from g1 to g2, z from h1 to h2. We put in our f, OK, of x, y, z. Let me skip that because we only have so much room, all right? Uh, and then we would be doing z, then we'd be doing y, then we'd be doing x, OK? You do it in that order, OK? So that's going to be the sort of standard setup, right? So the 
the, the picture you should have in mind here, right, this region of integration that you're dealing with is, is something, like, something like the following. So draw some coordinate axes in. Your x is running from A to B. Right. Um, here's y equals g1 of x. y is equal to g2 of x. So you can see the that region of integration there. And then you have your your two surfaces sitting over that region. So you might, in fact, have something like, I don't know, here z is equal to, um, sorry, uh, h1 of xy. Here's z is equal to h2 of xy. And you've got this region in between, right? So E is this region that's bounded by those two surfaces. Um, that, so that's the type of region that typically you'd be looking for when you're trying to set up an iterated triple integral. Okay? And we'll, uh, we'll see that in some of the examples to come.